Hello everyone and welcome to your new mini art lesson. Today we are going to learn how to create this spooky tree that haunts our forest at night. It also makes a great indoor Halloween decoration. This is a great workshop for artists 8 years old and up. So put on some spooky music and let's get creating. For this you're going to need a cardboard tube, something pretty sturdy, um, some painter's tape, a pencil and sharpie, some wire that is flexible but also um, sturdy as well, some wire cutters, an exacto knife with a safety lock, some aluminum foil, and some plaster bandage strips. Now this you can totally find at your local craft store. It normally comes in a big roll like this and then I just cut the strips. So first step is drawing your spooky face. For this I just sort of googled jack o lantern faces and kind of saw the general shapes that they use and I went with that. I then went over it with Sharpie just so I can um, see better when I'm cutting it. I then use my X-Acto, making sure that safety lock is on and always cutting away from my hand. Now the cardboard tube that I'm using here was pretty stiff, so it took me a few tries. I got a little frustrated, <laughs> stopped filming, and just kind of am going to show you the end results. <laughs> then placing your aluminum foil on top and using some painter's tape to seal it down. Here I'm cutting um, about 20 strips of wire and about the length of your forearm. Uh, but you'll notice as we start to create our branches with these, I'm going to be really cutting them down. So to create the branches, I took about three of these wires and I would take one wire, start to twist it around two of the wires, and then just sort of uh, put a little bit of tape to make it nice and sturdy. And don't worry too uh, if this is looking messy at this point because we're just going to be covering everything with plaster strip. So just kind of have fun with it and sort of play around with some of those really unique shapes uh, that branches have. And now I created about three of more longer branches for the top and then for like sort of side branches I created them a lot smaller so I cut them down probably the size of your index finger um, but same technique so I just sort of twisted one around and then kind of bent them in unique ways. So here I am creating the roots and how I did that is I start with the same technique so I'm taking one of the wires going around it, uh, two of the wires but then I would stick the end upwards so the roots kind of lay flat on the table. All right, so now putting those in your tree, I'm taking the top wires and just gently poking them through the aluminum foil. Now this can be a bit tricky here, so you want to go in and tape them down so they're sturdy. So what I would do is I'd put a little bit of tape and then with a marker, just kind of smooth out the tape and make sure they are uh, taped down. Thank you. 
And don't worry too if let's say throughout this process you rip a piece of the cardboard, just go in with some tape and tape it up. Um, because once again, we're just covering everything with plaster. So it doesn't matter if um, this step here is looking a little bit messy and all over the place. So to put the branches in the side, I just created a little sl um, slit on each side of the cardboard tube and I just stick them in and once again, however, tape, the, uh, tape them down on the inside just so they're really secure. And you can sort of play around with it as you go, just so you can really get that specific shape that you'd like. And placing the roots on the bottom, pretty easy, just kind of sticking them in and then taping the sides. Alright, so now we're ready for our plaster strips. So once again, you're going to get the plaster bandage probably in that huge roll. So what I do um, really before everything is I start to cut them into strips. It just makes everything a bit easier. And all you do is you will dip a strip into some water. And then once you take it out, you try and squeeze out some of the water. This helps with drying time. It also helps make it a bit smoother. But because we're doing this like spooky uh, tree that you'd find in the middle of the woods, don't worry if it's not totally smooth. Um, like I created a bunch of bumps on purpose really just so it gives you that cool texture. So um, yeah, once you place it in the water, you just sort of form it onto your tree. Um, like to do the branches, I would sort of twirl the plaster and then place it on. Um, and yeah, once again, just have fun with it. Don't worry if it's um, not super smooth. Um, yeah. And also you can always cut your plaster bandage strip. So when I was doing the face, I would cut it just to make it um, easier to mold onto my uh, spooky tree. And now you'll see here, I'm trying to cover the inside. Now, once again, this was a bit tricky just because the cardboard tube was uh, so small. But what I did, sort of same technique with the tape, I put plaster bandage in and then using a marker, I would try and kind of smooth it down. And you sort of just want to cover the areas that you can see through the holes of the face. So don't worry if like the top is still not super covered, just as long as we can, um, cover wherever we can see, really. Also a heads up, plaster bandage can be super messy, <laughs> so you may want to place a piece of plastic down um, or just kind of have some paper towel handy just in case.
Now you're going to notice I didn't uh, put plaster on all of the wire. I was really starting to realize how much wire I put, uh, but that's all good because all we have to do is wait for it to dry and then you can just simply snip off those little ends of wire you didn't cover in plaster. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. It's a super fun um, art medium. Now, uh, I guess it's not it. <laughs> We're missing a few steps. So what I did here is I let it dry for about four hours. Then I went ahead and just painted it this really dark brown uh, because paint does take quite a while to dry on plaster. So if you do want to work in layers, you kind of have to paint one layer, let it sit for a couple hours, and then paint the other. Uh, but yeah, so what I did, I let that sit for four hours. Then I went ahead, painted it brown, and I let that sit um, pretty much for 24 hours until I added my final touches. Alrighty, so here we are. We've made it the absolute final step. So first I trimmed off all those little extra bits of wire. Then I went ahead and painted the inside this really bright orange so it stood out when you looked at the face. Then using a small paintbrush, I just sort of uh, went around with these tree-like lines. Um, I do recommend working with a dry paintbrush throughout this process. It will really let the colors pop on your plaster and it also helps with drying because as soon as any water will touch plaster bandage, it will sort of get a little bit of a slimy feel. Uh, so really recommend using a dry paintbrush. Uh, but yeah, so I kind of went around, sort of want to do those like Tim Burton Beetlejuice sandworm lines. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, I just kept going, but this is totally up to you. Be creative with it. Um, you could paint your tree purple. I don't know, switch it up a bit. So totally your call with this step. Have fun with it and be creative. Thank you so much for joining me throughout this art process and I hope you had fun. Stay creative, have a wonderful spooky season and an awesome Halloween and I'll see you next time.